Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and investment wisdom collide. Featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zanbergen. Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, a showcase for wealth strategies and investment wisdom that's essential for our evolving world. I'm your host, Bart Zanbergen. As usual, we have in studio today, Paul, our engineer. Paul, how are you today? I am thrilled because I realized today I'm not the only one that wears car, uh, for a living, wears cargo <laughs> shorts and T-shirts. You guys did dress up a little bit, but he, he, when you looked at him, he said, well, you know, Paul, you know, dresses like this. He said, I think Paul's dressed up today, so I'm thrilled that he's here today. Well, well Todd's earned it. He's, he's retired. So. <laughs> That's the yeah. retirement uniform. Yeah. Well, I want to look like I'm retired. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to have uh, my guest today, Todd Jackson. Not only do I consider him a great friend, um, longtime uh, acquaintance, friend, and an, an amazing b- a business person with an amazing story. So, Todd, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me today, Bart. Of course, of course. So, just to kind of set it up, your I, I think your story is is both interesting and unique. You know, you and and your four buddies kind of come out of nowhere, develop this this great company, which we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. And um, and today you're retired. (laughs) Yes. Yes. The long dream has been achieved. (laughs) Exactly right. So um, I don't want to kind of very much steal your thunder. So why don't you tell the audience kind of a bit about your story, how you started Um, and kind of how we started. Um, Like in the beginning, I worked for my dad in an air conditioning company and uh, it was a union shop, which back in the late 80s was not a good thing. Uh, One day I came home, the shop was closed. I was 21. And I just thought, wow, there goes my house, my white picket fence, my wife and everything else I thought was coming out of this. And uh, reality hit. So I went back yeah. to junior college at Orange Coast and um, tried to get a degree in business. And through some acquaintances one day, uh, there was one day that changed my life specifically. I won't get into details, but uh, uh, I, I had a girlfriend. We broke up and uh, she showed up at this track thing and I turned around because I didn't want to talk to her. I met, introduced myself to two people, random people. Turns out through them, I met my business partners that I'd have for 25 years. And, oh, you know, wow. it just goes back to those decisions where I can choose to deal in the past or I can move forward. And, right. and I chose to move forward and yeah. I did. And in hindsight, it was the best thing I ever did because uh, through them that night, actually, I met two of my partners, Chad and Brent Halleck, yeah. went to a party. Man, these guys are fun. So I started <laughs> hanging out. And through them, I met a guy, Mark Huckins, that owned Mr. Mini Blind. And uh, I started working there so that Chad could stop selling blinds and do marketing. And uh, then uh, Dave Lewis came on board and then Tony Forbes. Uh, and we helped grow that business to probably 130 franchises. And then the uh, the two principals had a disagreement and basically that company kind of um, imploded, mm-hmm. which left the five of us staring at each other going, yeah. we're 25, I think. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? And <laughs> so we uh, each put five grand in the pot and printed a bunch of flyers and uh, – really just went out and knocked on doors every single day just to try to get business to uh, sell window coverings and uh, with the ultimate goal being selling a franchise and then selling two and then getting to 150. Um, But when we started, it was 1994. Orange County just filed bankruptcy. And everybody was telling us, well, you're crazy. What are you going to, how are you going to make it? And we're like, well, we don't really have a choice. (laughs) And, uh, and that's where, I mean, there's been different periods in our growth that, you know, having four other partners was instrumental in uh, I, I always look to you know chad brent dave and tony for different things but i remember chad just saying well we just have to do it and i'm like oh okay you know <laughs> yeah. i'll follow you off There's a no cliff choice. why yeah. not yeah. and uh he was probably the the instigator of getting everything started and get everybody together and um so yeah we just started selling blinds and then two years later we saved the money to pay the attorneys to get our U- our um, fdd done start selling our first franchise sold seven in orange county uh, the goal was to kind of go to a different area, a different market, and see if our system works. So I thought Utah would be great. It was between Utah, Colorado, and Oregon. And um, I liked Utah because I like to ski. <laughs> Once I found out I was going, I'm like, oh, I'm going somewhere I want to go. So we went to Utah, and Brent came out and helped me. And uh, it was – our goal was to be there six months and sell one. We were there – Eight months and sold 11. Sold out the whole state of Utah. Wow. By word of mouth, no marketing, no yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, but it was a great education for, for us because we got to go to an area where nobody knew us, nobody knew the concept, and to launch it and do that well was, was pretty intri- uh, pretty exciting for all of us. Because in Orange County, we're, we're, if, you were all, if you could see us all, we're all jokers and we mess with each other, but we're all very pessimistic about our success. Mm-hmm. Our success. Yeah. And we felt Orange County, well, we knew everybody. It's easy. You know? I yeah. mean, how hard can it be? 
Um, so going to a different state was was key for me, and it was enlightening for myself to say, "Wow, this this really works." Just to prove you can do it. Yeah. yeah. And then we came back, and um, I stopped selling blinds and started doing accounting work. Chad was doing all the sales and marketing, and as we started selling more and more franchises, Brent came into support. Uh, we started having a need for IT because you got to remember there's no internet, there's no nothing back That's then. That's right. That was Dave's role, I think. Dave, yeah, Dave yeah. stepped up and he took that over. He was uh, his famous saying is, I think he's. Uh, I typed a paper in a computer in college once, and so <laughs> I'm the IT manager. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but everybody it was interesting because we all were different personality types, and we were all able to do things that normally we wouldn't be able to do. If you were your own business owner, you'd have to be the sales and marketing guy, do the the production, do the right. support, all that stuff. And right. by having partners that we all got paid the same, yeah. um, it worked out. Yeah. And uh, in the early days, we'd, we'd make money. We'd sit around the ping pong table yeah. in the back of a warehouse that we were borrowing from somebody else. And you know, whoever had the most expenses... You know, if it's sixteen, seventeen hundred bucks, that's what everybody yeah. got paid. And yeah. we went to the next month and we did the same thing. Yeah. Um I think one of the most things we are most proud of is we never borrowed a dime to build anything. It was all organic and we all yeah. just, just, just worked. Right. Um So let's let's pause for just a second. A couple of things you said that I think are really interesting. So the the two people and you meant Brett and Chad, was that was you, what I love about you, well my, a lot of things <laughs> is you have you have isms, you have, you have yeah. like things that you live by. Was that something that, that you had were living by? I'm going to meet like two people a day or two people a week? Or is that just like that moment you're like, hey, something happened in my life. I'm just going to go meet two people. No, it was really, I would just, you know, I, I had this girlfriend, like I said, and, and my life was pretty routine. Yeah. So routine, in fact, that I wasn't meeting people. I'd go to school. I'm like, why well, do I want to meet them? I got a girlfriend. I'm going to go see her. You know, yeah. that, that was my routine. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, my dad closing his company was the best thing that ever happened to me because it shook me so hard at 21 to say, what What am I going to do? And I, I'm literally sitting, getting ready to run a 10K. I'm not a runner, but I needed extra economic points, and that's yeah. what my teacher said I could do. <laughs> and when my ex-girlfriend showed up, I turned around and talked to these two guys, yeah. and Todd Wiki and uh, Scott Mann, and then they were going to a party that night. I'm like, hey, I want to go with you guys. Yeah. Hey, we're going with these two guys from uh, Orange. What's up, Chad and Brian Halleck? I'm like, yeah, invite them over, have a couple cocktails, we'll go to a drink. Yeah, I went to a party that night with them. Chad drove, which I, I don't let him drive anymore. He's nuts. But um, <laughs> my future wife was there. Yeah, didn't know that was her till four years later. So that one instance of not wanting wow. to go back and turning the corner, it wasn't about meeting two people every day. It was just about seeing what else is out there. Yeah, and the first day I did it, it was yeah. you know I look back and I'm like. What if I went and talked to her? I yeah. never would have met those guys. I wouldn't right. be here today. I wouldn't yeah. be retired. What would I be doing? Uh, I think that falls into with kind of the, a fate thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a little bit of that in there. Yeah. All right. FDD. Tell everybody what that is. So FDD, um, there's state organizations that, that the government makes you in franchising, gives you certain rules that you have to abide by, whether they be earnings claims or what you can say, so that I'm not hoodwinking potential franchisees. There's a okay. lot of regulations in there. I think franchising gets a bad name because there's a lot of guys out there that do yeah. uh, kind of step over that line, so to speak. Gotcha. Um, but again, the, the four guys that I became partners with, we all have – we're very – um, we have a lot of integrity, I think, yeah. each of us in oh, our own 100%. way. Yeah. And we wanted to build something that we would buy. And it came down to exclusive territories yeah. and royalties and what they would be. And um, one of the things we always did was, even though we started something, we'd, we'd always go, is this still right? Is this still working? What can we do to make yeah. it better? Um, like royalties, for example, usually a percentage base. We moved to a flat rate royalty. And the reason we did that is we had really good people that were killing it, yeah. paying us five grand a month. Yeah. Well, at the end of their agreement, they're going to go, is this, is this five grand value to me? Am I, am I getting five grand worth of value from these guys? Yeah. The answer is no. Yeah. Then I got the other guy that's paying me a hundred bucks a month yeah. that wants to stay in it for the rest of his life. So <laughs> yeah. we moved to a fifth flat rate royalty and, yeah. and we got criticized for it because they're like, well, you're going to miss on the growth when you do build this thing nationwide. Yeah. Um, and in hindsight, it was the best decision we made. We are all in the same boat now. We are all looking at the problem from the same side of the table. Mm-hmm. I don't have to audit franchisees anymore if they're trying to cheat from me or steal from me yeah. because their royalty's flat. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So that all went away. And I think a lot of the negative uh, connotations that franchisors have went away with that. Yeah. We've always tried to align ourselves with our system and say, what's working for you? How can we make that better? Because if they succeed, we succeed. It's very simple. Yeah. And uh, we all agreed on that. And so, yeah. you know. So I always find it interesting that, I mean, five guys, um, and, I, there, and I know there's both good and bad things about that, yeah. right? Right. No, Mostly no, no. good. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> um, but also, 
So you start at Mr. Mini Blind. Did any of you actually get specific training? Like, this is what you do for franchise. This is what you do, or is it was it just like I, you just pick it up as you go? You know, um, I, I, I say we learned a lot what to do. We also learned a lot what not to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Chad did a lot of the marketing. He did all of the marketing mm-hmm. for for that company. I was involved with franchise sales. Brent was involved with support. Uh, and then we were all involved with training to a certain degree. So when we started Budget Blinds, it was kind of a no-brainer. We just, you know, I'm going to go over to this office and do this, and you're going to do that. Yeah. And, and But we still had that entrepreneurial spirit that crossed over each other's departments. Um, but we trusted in that person. Like, for example, Brent is one of the best salesperson on the planet. Huh. Bar none. I yeah. love the guy for this. And we were all selling. Yeah, I'm a better installer than Brent. And I'm like, why are... Why don't I do install? Yeah. You, know, you make more money doing that. I yeah. make more money doing this. Yeah. And it was kind of that first idea of departmentalization. Like, yeah. what are we good at? And uh, there was a point in our, our growth, we got to 150 franchises because that was our goal. Yeah. We started the company. Everybody's like, oh, what do you, we're going to get 150 franchises. Well, what does that mean? You know, all the business talk, right? Yeah. It means we're going to have 150 franchises. Well, how much are you making? I have no idea. <laughs> 150 franchises. Yeah. That's all we could That's think about. Yeah. And uh, we got there. And at 150 franchises, we all looked at each other like, is this what you thought it was going to be? And I'm like, no. I'm working 12 hours a day. I'm dealing with these customers that are paying on the butt. These franchises yeah. are driving me absolutely insane. Yeah. And we realized that we weren't departmentalized. Everybody was doing the same job. And I think it was my dad at the time said, hey, I want to meet you and your partners. Sat us all down. And everybody that's gone to a business class or a, you know, a seminar has heard this yeah. speech where it's like, you know, you got to figure out what you want and come up with a number. And and we've heard it a thousand times, but for yeah. some reason we were desperate enough <laughs> to try it. And so we all went home and wrote a list of all the things we wanted in life, what, the car, where you live, all the all these things. Put yeah. a number on it. I remember Dave came back and he, he wanted a house in Colorado. We're like, oh, great. Aspen on the ski lift, right? Yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah. Let's go to the moon, right? <laughs> but it was a cool exercise because we came up with a number, and the number was $50 million bucks. Yeah, We need to have a company worth $50 million for all five of us to get what we want. Yeah. And, you know, the number there, you're sitting there going, that's just ridiculous. Like, 50, that's like, seriously, we might as well go to the moon. Like, yeah. it's just impossible. The way I remember that day. Yeah. I remember that conversation. You were involved. Yeah. And I remember Chad going, well, if all I have to do is sales and marketing, I'm good. And this is where I messed up because I go, yeah. well, if all I have to do is, like, the finance and the legal department, <laughs> I'm good. So that's what I ended up doing for 25 years. But, um, no, it was Chad's courage and that 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 spark that caused all of us to say, well, I can do this. And Brent's like, hey, if I do support and have to deal with legal, I'm in. And Dave's like, if I can do computers and, you know, Tony's, if I can do support too, then, yeah. and all of a sudden it, it's like, we didn't know it, but we, 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 um, hit a great hurdle that most companies, most yeah. entrepreneurial companies don't, don't make. Yeah. And, um, and it was because we had five guys. It wasn't because there was one or two. It yeah. was because of the five of us and having that ability to, to know yeah. that, not only am I departmentalized, I'm departmentalized with a guy that's been with me when we had blinds hanging out the sunroof selling out of our car and <laughs> rolling rollerblades in the summer to yeah. get more flyers out. You know, he understands the blood, sweat, and tears that went yeah. into this. Uh, and that bond could never be broken. Mm-hmm. It didn't get broken at all, even when we sold the company. I mean, yeah. there's always days, and you have these days where you're, yeah. you know, we'd fight, and you're, you're a jerk, I'm a jerk, everybody's a jerk. Hey, where are we going to lunch? You know? <laughs> and we go to lunch, and it was like a brother thing. I never yeah. had brothers, but yeah. I, I imagine this is what it would be like yeah. when you can... Yell and scream at somebody at the top of your lungs, <laughs> and then go to lunch with them twenty minutes later, <laughs> <laughs> and then hear about what you know, whatever else is going on with their family. But, but still, so at this point, and I, I definitely want to get to the, the, the second half of this too. Um, five guys, other than your dad's advice, sitting you down. Um, did, did anybody have any like formal like this is business one oh one and this is how you do a franchise one oh one or were you guys just intuitive enough and 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 I don't know, smart enough to figure it out on your own. No, we had no, no, I I, I was going to business school. I I, I was, I was at Orange Coast taking a business class. I'll never forget this. I went to my teacher and I said, look, I'm looking at doing this franchising thing with my buddies. And what do you think? And he looks at the business plan. He goes, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. (laughs) I'm like, what? And I'm like, but look at the numbers. The numbers are good. And I kept showing it to him and showing it to him. And he wasn't giving me any encouragement. Yeah. And I went and talked to my dad and I'm like, I just don't understand. He goes, Todd, he's a teacher. I love teachers. I do love teachers, but but it's a different mentality that you're dealing with. And if you believe in it and you truly know that this is your call, go do it. Yeah. Don't listen to anybody that tells you no. Yeah. I don't care who it is, even if it's me. And he did tell me no a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. no, it was, a, it was 
No, we didn't know. And what, I mean, we would draw things on on paper and like, does this make sense? We got a dollar. It cost us 50 cents and we made 50 and that went in the bank. And then we minus our expenses and that's what we made. That It was <laughs> that as basic as simple it gets, on a big still, green ledger. Yeah. And it was kind of cool because everybody would put their sales on there. Yeah. So whoever the last guy in that day would be like, Brent sold 10 grand a day. I got to sell 12 grand tomorrow. Yeah. To make up. And so there's always this competition because yeah. you didn't want to be the guy like letting others down. Yeah. And that one ledger That's, paper that lived on the desk every single day was, yeah. was living proof every day if you're yeah. doing good or bad. That's and, so uh, awesome. And so, no, we didn't have any formal All education. Right. All right. We're going to do one quick uh, break. We'll be right back. With more than 25 years of experience, Bart's comprehensive perspective has earned acclaim from clients across the globe. Gain access to lessons learned throughout Bart's career by following at Bart Sandbergen on Instagram. To learn more about Bart Sandbergen as an advisor, mentor, and public speaker, and for more information on Optivest Wealth Management, please visit www.bartzandbergen.com. All right, back to Bart and his guest. I love this story. See, there's proof. You can live in cargo shorts and, and live to see another day. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. So we've got, uh, we have budget blinds. They're up to now a value of $50 million. Um, so what happens next, Todd? You know, we... Um we always doubt ourselves because we're yeah. just – we always call ourselves a bunch of knuckleheads. So yeah. that was we, – we affectionately referred – and I think yeah. it was the one thing that grounded us most. Yeah. And we started looking for outside help. You know, we need to hire a CFO. We need to get a guy – we should get a general manager just to come in here and help us because yeah. I, I, we don't know the next step. So we hired a guy and he came on board with all these – you know, these ideas of selling the company and all this growth thing. And we're like, oh, it's foreign to me, so let's go with it. And as you're going down that road, he's, we're doing things, and we're like, it just doesn't feel right. This isn't right. This isn't who we are, and this isn't this isn't what our franchisees need, because we're we're trying to look at a number without keeping them in in check, you know. Right. And so, three, four, five years into it, we actually fired the guy and took the reins back, and we're like, you know what? Nobody else can do this. Chad, you got that. You're great at it. Tony's yeah. good at this. Brent's great at that. You know, Dave, and, and I'll do this stuff, you know, and let's just do it. And so we did. And uh, it's a different perspective. There's, there's, we, have a, we have a lot of opportunity to meet people when we do conventions. We'd have, you know, 2,000 people there or whatever, and we'd be able to hire great people, you know. Yeah. Um, I couldn't even begin to mention some of them. But one of the ones that hit me most was the guy wrote on the board E plus R equals O. And it's event plus your response equals the outcome. And everybody gets tied up in this event issue, and they get their response, and they forget the outcome. And then when it's done, they go, oh, it wasn't the right outcome. And the idea is, figure out what the outcome is first, yeah. then gauge your response. Because if you, you just respond to stuff naturally, you won't get where you want to be. And, and having that, that thought of a $50 million company and what it means to me and my department in legal and, and accounting and all that stuff is different than Chad or Brent, but it's still $50 million bucks. Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, I was able to look at something, somebody presents something to me, and I'm like, does that get me the desired outcome? Does that get me to $50 million bucks? And if it did, we'd talk about it. And if it didn't, I'm like, this is just a distraction, and it's, yeah. it's no need, not needed anymore. But without that desired income, what you want... And, and that's the, that is the absolute hardest thing to figure out, to have the guts to stand up and say, we're going to build a company worth 50 million bucks. So I, we do training, right? I have 15 people in the room. I have to tell them Monday that we're going to build a $50 million company. And I'm thinking, this is just not going to come off truthful. This is going to yeah. look like an idiot. Yeah. And they all bought it. And I'm like, wow, that, I just got to say this more. Yeah. So the more you say it. Yeah, the more it becomes real. And even your friends that want you to. Maybe yeah. quietly fail a little bit because mm -hmm. if you're successful, that means their decision to stay in that cubicle was yeah. the right one. Yeah, they actually want you to fail a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when you meet, when you make fifty million bucks and you ate peanut butter and jelly for eighteen years and you did all these <laughs> horrible things that you had to do to get there, yeah. your reward from your friends and you just want them to go, "Wow, you hit a home run!" Like, "Wow, you're so lucky." And you're like, "Huh? Yeah." And you're like, I, it's my least favorite term in the world. You know what? I am lucky. I'm lucky to have met these guys. I'm yeah. lucky to have had this sense to make the decisions that I. You know what? I am. Yeah. And you just move on. And yeah. it's great. And once yeah. you're there, it's... I mean, I was blessed to have the four guys where I could truly tell them anything. 
it's not like a friend went, hey, we just we just built a company for 50 million bucks. You're kind yeah. of being boastful and braggadocious yeah. or whatever. But but with them, it was more like spiking the the, the football and the touchdown. Yeah. Like, yeah. We just 50 million. Come on, let's go yeah. drink. Yeah, let's do something. <laughs> like you know, and we yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had a yeah. lot of those moments. Yeah, um, and so getting past that, it was really. So you hit that, and then what, you guys came together and we said... We came together, redepartmentalized, and then we looked again. Like, you're like, what, is this what? really the number? Yeah. And then the internet happened. Yeah. A lot of good things happened to us that, that weren't there. And, yeah. and I remember Chad sitting in our little Costa Mesa office going, hey, I'm going to try this internet thing. It's marketing. I don't know. It's like, you know, um, $5. I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm going to find out. I mean, that was yeah. our mainstay. That that's, It actually allowed us to change the structure of our company because we could market differently. Yeah. Chad Ridge excuse me, originally did it on a DMA basis, which is a national system. Yeah. And when the internet happened, he was able to buy local. And and we always say we, we would take that that forgotten mom and pop service image of local talent, local people that would work on your house and professionalize it. So we gave, we had local franchisees, your neighbors yeah. that come out and do the work, but we give them that umbrella of a large company. Right. So it's a win-win for everybody. And the internet absolutely fit perfect into that. Yeah. Couldn't have asked for a better time. So you guys, along the way, you brought a great building. Bought a building. Which was also a great investment yeah. overall, great decision. And you yes. guys brought other real estate together, but you did the building. Uh, you did the internet. You were on Undercover Boss. Yes, that was, I forgot. Thank you for, I forgot yeah. about that. Um, which helped business, right? I mean, that was a good business play. You or? know what? It, it, it was huge. Yeah. It was really big. I mean, I don't think, I think they're probably still getting leads from people I saw you on Undercover Boss. It was on two times during the year, and then they voted to see which the best episode was. And we won. So we got to air it oh, again. Oh, is that right? Wow. And, this is, and I didn't really get it. Like, yeah. I, I mean, Chad did a great job on yeah. it. You know, he did the whole thing. And I remember sitting at my home with my wife and my brother-in-law and his wife and it aired in New York. And my phone's just blowing up. And I'm like, this is bigger than I thought. And then I'm watching <laughs> it and I'm realizing, like, this is national TV. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Yeah. And, um... It was a, a signature moment in our in our growth for sure. Yeah. And it, it just, it really sunk home with, I think, all of us that we're really doing a good thing. We yeah. we, we built a system that is exclusive territories, um, flat rate royalties. We built it for the person that wants to leave the corporate corporate business, be more involved with his family, make his own schedule, get involved with the community. And that was our goal. And we did. Yeah. And and we were well rewarded for that, by the yeah. way. So, yeah. And then other things popped up. Like we're flat rate royalty. Everybody's like, hey, you're not going to be able to get the big picture when it's done. Well, we yeah. went to the vendors and got vendor rebates. Yeah. And that made up the difference. Uh, than what we didn't get in the growth. Right. But it was it was constantly making those decisions at the time that might have been tough to make, but were the right ones to make. Yeah. And it's hard. But again, if you if you know what you're fighting for and you know what your your outcome, you your chosen outcome is to be, yeah. it they're very easy decisions to make. Yeah. So we're, I, I want to make sure we get enough in it, and we're going to have to book in a couple more times. This is so <laughs> interesting. Um, all right. So you, I, you clearly you blew through the fifty million. We don't have to talk about that number, mm-hmm. but um, what I, I want to make sure we talk about, hey, what were some, let's start there. What were some of the challenges that you, that you hit and either overcame or, or didn't? I think the, the challenge for me was, um, you know, I didn't, I had a hard time in school. I barely made it out of high school. Hmm. You, I, I don't know if I've ever written you an email. You probably have. And you, you take 30 <laughs> minutes to figure out what the hell I'm trying to say. But um, I'm dyslexic. I have a hard time spelling. Hmm. And I tried to hide that forever. And then this darn internet thing showed up with email hmm. and I had to face it. And I just realized like, that's not who I am. And it, I was just, I learned what I'm bad at and I accepted it. And once I learned to accept it, everything was fine. You couldn't say anything to bug me anymore. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, uh, I know you talk about bullying in, in yeah. your childhood and, yeah. and all that stuff. And I, I had a little bit of it maybe in my childhood, but I remember thinking, well, I figured this out. Yeah. If, if I if I tell you I'm a bad speller, yeah. I'm this, this, and this, yeah. then whatever you say, it's on you. Wow, what a mean person for bringing that up. That's, yeah. that's not nice. Yeah. And I don't care. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is I did all the legal work and all the accounting. <laughs> you did. So, and it wasn't until we had the opportunity to meet Barbara Corcoran, and she did this financial report. Make a long story short, she's dyslexic. She can't spell. And I, I realize that sometimes you're good at what you're bad at. Yeah, and I was so fearful of making a mistake in a contract or in yeah. a written word that I'd read it 19 times, yeah. and it was pretty doggone good when it was over. Yeah, or somebody that that comes easy to them reads it once and throws it out there, and there's 15 mistakes in it. Yeah, I was so afraid of looking like an idiot, I would overdo it. Do you know right. what I mean? Right. And so, right, it, it in that fear of actually telling somebody what you want, 
I want this. Um, it's okay to want this Ford F three fifty truck with thirty five inch tires, white with gray interior, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And then when you drive it off the lot, you're like, oh my god, this is the coolest truck ever on the whole planet. Yeah. And that feeling is addicting. Uh-huh. And we get our franchisees to try to overcome that with when they buy a business, a franchise business. What is? What do you want out of this? What's your goal? And and some of them. I want to take my wife to Spain. Great. How much does that cost? When are you going to get there? How much do you have to do today to get there? Yeah. Because once I know once you get that, you're hooked. And you will be successful. And if you're successful and happy, then I'm successful and happy. And yeah. it turned into not so much dollar conversations, which that yeah. always is a big part of business, yeah. but really not working for the dollar, but working for that lifestyle. I mean, if you yeah. gave me 10 bucks to go down and move your car, I'd be like, go move it yourself. Yeah. But if you said, hey, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go move your car for you just because I want to and help you. That's yeah. that, I'm, I'm motivated differently. And everybody's motivated differently. But for me, it was understanding my fear, understanding if I just say what my fear is and move past it and then get on with my life. Yeah. It's, it's, way, it's way more productive. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great lesson. In a couple minutes, can you jam in the um, – it's, it's not fair. A couple, the, kind of the process you went through when you said, we are going to We are going to sell. And you had options. You had private equity. You had yeah. you could have got listed on, on, on an asset. You could have sold privately. Mm-hmm. Can you just give a couple minutes on that? It's not fair, but yeah. And it was interesting even coming up with that decision yeah. because I think it's like your kids. You realize when they're fifteen to eighteen, they don't need you anymore. Mm. And it was like that with this business. We've kind of we kind of grew to a point where like this somebody else needs to come in and take this to the next level. And so yeah. once we decided that, it was now what's the best vehicle to do it? Because you always got people knocking on your door going, "How hey, to give you five dollars uh, for that company?" And you're like, yeah. "Well." And we came up with a number, and, mm. and uh, to be frank, I wanted twenty million bucks after, after it was done in my yeah. pocket in the bank account. Yeah, for me to leave. Yeah, and um, everybody was right there. You know, Chad had a number. Everybody had a number. I'm yeah. like, okay, great. Well, let's get this. How do we get there? Yeah, and we had a couple of people come in and offer us money, and it was yeah. way low. And yeah. we threw Ernst and Young, our CFO, introduced uh, us to him. And uh, they came on, told us about this auction process, which were like, auction? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> but um, it was interesting because for a year, they went through your company like they were going to buy it through everything, yeah. worked out all the bugs and all the issues. And then the next year, they come out and they put it up for auction. They say, hey, and you get to dictate your terms. Our terms, we want this much money. We want to all leave because we couldn't stand watching <laughs> any one of us to stay there. It would be yeah. agonizing, I think, to, yeah. to have to report to somebody else. Yeah. Um, and then this was the number we needed to make after taxes. Yeah. And it was cool because they said, hey, if you get 25, 30 people, you're great. We got 58 on the first round. We're like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's just one of those proud moments when you're, you, know, you look at your kid, so to speak, and yeah. he's 25 years old and he's got a job and he's married with a baby. You're like, wow, he was listening. <laughs> and um, so selling the company um, was the best thing we ever did. Yeah. I, I, we all pinch ourselves. We all call each other. Hey, what are you doing today? I'm golfing. Great. Good for you, you know. But everybody's still involved with a little thing on the side just to yeah. you know help out their community and stuff. So. Yeah. It's one of my favorite stories. I mean, I've known you guys for 25, 26 years. One of my favorite stories. It couldn't happen to a better bunch of guys. And so I remember it, the day I met you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do I. So do I. <laughs> it's all good. Yes. Um, all right. We are coming to the end. And, Todd, so um, what you may or may not know, my final question that I get hmm. the honor of asking is, what is your ultimate l- lesson learned in your career as a as a businessman, I think just don't be afraid. Just just and I tell my kids this, and it's it's hard because you have to have some some trials in your life to really figure this out. But don't be afraid to get what you want, and don't be afraid to tell anybody what you want. I don't care if it's a car, I don't care if it's a trip, I don't care if it's food or whatever. I'm going to have this, yeah. and when you do, relish in it, enjoy it, and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, because what happens is. You get through things really quick, and then you start looking at what's really important is happiness and time and your family and how do I spend more time with them. And it's I always looked at money as oil to the machine of life. How can I make this machine more efficient so that I can go coach my kid's baseball, his football team, be around for him, take a motorcycle riding, take him to the hospital when he breaks a bone, those things. Because that's what's – to me, that's what all all this is about. And, you know, I've been blessed and – knowing people like you to help me achieve yeah. that goal. So thank so you. So great. Hey, Todd, thanks so much for coming in today. That was a great story. We could have spent twice as long, but <laughs> I appreciate you uh, you getting it in. And I want to thank uh, to everyone who has tuned in. We look forward to seeing you back in the studio again next week. Cheers. Thanks. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. 
Catch up on our recent shows by visiting bartzanbergen.podbean.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. Bart A. Zanbergen, CFP, and Letitia Burbaum, AIF, are registered investment advisors with Optivest, Inc., and registered representatives with Gramercy Securities, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered by Optivist, Inc., under SEC registration.